There are two ways to operate the clutch on your car or motorcycle, by cable or with hydraulics. My van has a hydraulic clutch, which means it uses brake fluid from a reservoir to fill the upper cylinder. When I apply the clutch pedal, it builds pressure in the system, which goes through pipes and hoses to the lower cylinder, and the piston on the lower cylinder operates the clutch itself. As with any other hydraulic system, leaks and air in the pipes or cylinders can prevent it from operating properly. This causes a mushy pedal feel, improper clutch operation. I even had a situation where I would press the clutch and with the pedal still down, it would release itself after a few seconds. If you have a hydraulic clutch and any of these problems, you should check for leaks first. All the pipes and the connections and don't forget to check under the boot of the cylinders as well. If you don't find any leaks, you can try bleeding the system and flushing the old fluid out. Sometimes there can be air bubbles and that can cause troubles. And if that doesn't help, well, you're going to have to replace or rebuild one or both of your cylinders. My lower cylinder is leaking and the system is full of gunk, so I'm going to be rebuilding both of them. It's actually really easy, you don't need any special tools, and it's much cheaper than replacing both of the cylinders. Typically, you can find the upper cylinder under the dashboard, near your pedals, and the lower cylinder is typically located on the gearbox itself. Starting with the upper cylinder, it was really easy to take out. It has two 13mm bolts here, a boundary bolt that connects it to the lower cylinder, this hose which feeds from the reservoir, I just took it out, and the pin from the pedal is still on the pedal, it just slides out of the boot. The boot itself is obviously pretty short, so that has to go. In order to take out the piston, we have to take out this retention clip, and to prevent the piston from springing out, I'm going to apply some pressure using this bolt, then poke out the retention clip. Careful, it's a bit springy and it might want to jump. There it goes. And now when I release the bolt, the piston just slides out. So the rubbers we need to replace are this one and this one. And then we're going to give it a good clean because it's very, very gunky. Rubbers slide out very easily. This one in this direction, and this one, and this one like so. With the rubbers out, fresh rag, and clean it with some brake cleaner. Now I'm going to clean the cylinder as well, because it's pretty nasty on the inside. I cleaned the, fill, the filler place, the banjo bolt seat, and of course the inside. Paid some special attention to the retention ring seat so it can sit back in properly. Let's see what comes in the refreshment kit. We have a new boot, a new filler hook thingy, a new copper washer, and two new rubber seals for the cylinder itself. I'm not going to use any other lubricants other than some fresh brake fluid, just to make things a bit more slippery. First up, the filler thingy. That's in place. Next up, the new seals. Open the washer here. The back seal is the one without the skirt. And the front one is the one with the skirt. Easy. And now the tricky bit is getting everything back inside the cylinder. I'm gonna put some brake fluid around. I'm also gonna dip this in. The problem is you don't want to flip these skirts around and you don't want to tear them either and they're a bit hard to get in. The first one usually goes easily but the second one can be a pain. I'm going to apply some pressure with my bolt again and the way I do this is I use a shim from my feeler gauge and I just work around it until it slips in. This is the trickiest bit of the entire job, actually. And eventually it goes in. 
Now putting the retention clip, which is a bit tricky as well. Take a screwdriver and poke it from the side. And of course it usually clicks in. And once you're sure it's well seated all the way around, which it is now, you can let go of the bolt and you want to make sure that everything is moving freely. Install the new boot. And easy as that, we have a brand new upper clutch cylinder. For the lower cylinder, we're going to flip the cloth around. Here we have a couple of retention clips holding in the rubber. Mmm, yummy. Mmm, very yummy. Take my trusty bolt again, press it in. And if yours doesn't want to come out like mine, you can use some compressed air here at the back. Just make sure you're pointing down and at something soft so that it doesn't propel forward and you don't chip it. And you can see how grimy it is on the inside. Taking off the bleeder. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. That was easy. I think this brake fluid is as old as the van itself because well both cylinders are original VW parts and I don't know nothing looks to have ever been replaced fortunately I don't have a sand blaster so wire brush is the best I can do I'm gonna mask it off give it a fresh coat of paint just so that it looks a bit better Just came back from the paint booth and we're looking pretty good although the front is a bit still rusty but that's gonna be hidden under the boot I did paint the front part of the rod as well just so that it matches now let's see what came in the kit we have a new boot a new locking ring new rubber seal and a new cap for the bleeder some fresh brake fluid careful this is directional you want to get it right just like the other ones were The spring locks onto the piston. And there it is good as new now I'm gonna put the new boot I'm gonna put these old clamps on even though they're this one at least is a bit loose but just looks a bit more complete why this in here
And here they are, two freshly refurbished clutch cylinders. All that's left now is to install them and bleed the system. The upper one is in place, moving fine. Now let's move to the back. The lower cylinder is also in place. Getting the second bolt on this side is a bit of a pain in the ass, but with a little bit of finger technique, it's doable. It's time to bleed now. On all the cars I know personally, the clutch feeds from the brake fluid reservoir for the brakes. And when you drain the clutch, it reaches pretty much the minimum level. The brakes shouldn't suck in any air. So you just need to fill it up to the max and then bleed like normally. It's time for the test. Keep an eye on the clutch lever. I'm gonna go press the pedal. And it's that easy. Two brand new clutch cylinders for less than 10 euros. At least that's what I spent on the repair kit and a little bit of brake fluid, of course. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, drop a like below, ask me something in the comments and consider subscribing. See you next time. Bye.